Good morning, everybody. Pastor Bill Emmons here, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International, and uh, we welcome you this morning to our service. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we are an online congregation at this point. I'm an online pastor, and uh, we do online ministry, And uh, but we're reaching people around the world, thousands, literally. Uh, we're reaching every week. We welcome you to our service this morning. I have to go ahead and... Um, get my monitor set up here until my assistant shows up. Uh, I have to deal with it myself. So bear with me for just about a minute and I'll get this set up and uh, I'll be able to transfer this over, put it on our church page on Facebook and um, make sure that people that watch our church page can see the service this morning as well as people that watch my page. And it says it's posted. Let me see, make sure it's there. I don't see it yet. And there it is. Okay. Now I go back to my page that I can monitor and see what's happening. And there we have my page. It's playing. And uh, okay, let's see. All right, we're well, welcome. Praise God. Um, got a good word for you this morning. I believe it's going to bless you. And I uh, believe it's an anointed word. And you're going to receive this morning. So open your hearts, open your minds. We're going to worship the Lord here in a minute. But I want to give you your weekly prosperity message. And you say, oh, you're one of those prosperity preachers. Well, Jesus was a prosperity preacher. Uh, go back and read the things he said. He talked more about finances than any, th any other single subject. And so I believe he believed in prosperity. Uh, you know, he had a treasurer that handled the finances that was stealing from him. Uh, and it was enough that the other disciples didn't even know about it. So uh, they had enough to feed the crowds. They had enough to uh, have a place to sleep <laughs> and clothes on their back and, and travel around the country and, and preach in different cities. Uh, he wasn't poor. Now, he laid down everything. He became poor, the Bible says, that through his poverty, we might have abundance. Because poverty is under the curse. Deuteronomy 28 clearly indicates that poverty, lack, and want are under the curse, as well as sickness and disease and so forth. <clears throat> so Christ redeemed us from the curse. So if I'm redeemed from poverty, I'm redeemed to the opposite, which is provision abundance, blessing. Uh, go back to the Garden of Eden. There was more than enough at all times. There was never a lack of anything. It was more than they needed. And that's the way God is. God is an abundant God. He, he is always more than enough for us. Amen. So I want to give you this verse. Now this is um, uh, out of um, Galatians. It's, and this is chapter 3. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And then uh, that's a combination of uh, Psalm 35, 27 and Galatians 3, 14 indicates and tells us clearly that uh, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse, being made a curse for us. So the blessings of Abraham, that's verse 14, might come upon us. The blessings of Abraham, if you study that out, you find out Abraham was a very wealthy man. Uh, at one point, he had to arm a few hundred of his servants to go down and beat up on a king that stole, <laughs> stole his family, kidnapped him. And uh, he was able to arm those men and go down there and win the battle and bring back the spoil. Uh, that's not a poor man. That's not just an average guy that, you know, kind of making a living. That's a man that's got a, a lot of resources. And the Bible declares the blessings of Abraham might come on us. Well, the blessings of Abraham obviously include more than possessions. The blessings of Abraham include the promise of redemption, salvation through the Messiah, Jesus. And, uh, you know, with that comes forgiveness of sins and uh, deliverance from the attacks of the enemy and protection by the hand of God. And, of course, uh, heaven is our eternal home and being raised from the dead at the rapture of the church if you have laid down your body. 
So the blessings of Abraham are a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. And I'll accept that. And that's new, new covenant. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So again, uh, the combination of the two, Galatians 3.14, Psalms 35.27, the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And of course, Abraham's blessings are ours as well because of what Jesus did. Remember, he became poor so that through his poverty, we might have abundance. So that's another couple of verses you can uh, spend some time meditating upon and get it in you. You know, as a pastor, I've been pastoring for over 44 years. And uh, <clears throat> I, I have noticed something. And that is that uh, a lot of people over the years have attended churches like ours, have heard the word preached, but have developed an attitude that, you know, well, I've heard that before. That's old, old news. I'm looking for something new. Well, the Bible warns us about people that are always looking for new things because they, they pile up one teacher after another uh, to satisfy their own desires rather than what God has for them. But let me ask you a simple question. Have you ever eaten a steak? Or think about what your favorite meal is. Uh, you know, just because you ate it once, I mean, you're ever going to eat it again? No, you're going to eat that as often as you can if it's something you really like. Uh, why don't we take the same approach with the Word of God? Why? Because we heard somebody preach on faith or on healing or prosperity or forgiveness or whatever it is. Do we develop the attitude when the pastor gets up to preach on that same subject again that we don't receive it as the, the, the spiritual food that our spirit man needs to produce life and faith and strength in our spirit, soul, and body. Why don't we receive that as an ongoing feeding on the Word of God? The Bible is a man not led by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It says, faith cometh by what? Hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. But the true understanding of that verse Faith cometh by hearing and 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 hearing until you get to the point you're so tired of it, you're about ready to throw that CD out or you're tired of hearing it so much. The next time you hear it, all of a sudden you get a revelation. You've been listening to it for days, weeks, months, maybe years, and you pull it out and decide to listen to it one more time and you hear something you never heard before because there's revelation in the Word of God. The more you meditate on the Word of God, the more revelation is going to be opened up to you. So just because I talk about prosperity or healing or whatever the subject may be, you say, well, I heard Brother So-and-so preaching that or Sister So-and-so. I've read these books and I've, you know, I've heard you preach many times on the subject. Well, praise God. It's another good meal for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good morning, Torsha. Good to have you with us. Hallelujah. We're going to worship here uh, this morning. And um, I'm just really impressed. I've never heard this song before. Uh, it's a very simple song. And I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. And then after we're done with worship, I'm going to talk to you a few minutes before we get into the Word of God. So let's go ahead and just take some time to worship the Lord this morning. You're still my first love. You're still my only one, you're still my first love, Jesus, it's you, you're still my only one, sing it out, you're still, you're still my first love, you're still
That's such a good song. I actually wanted to go through that twice. It's a short song. And um, I really, uh, I have been listening to that the last couple of days. I can't tell you how many times, but it really has blessed me. It's one of those songs you can put on replay, repeat, uh, autoplay, whatever you have on your device, and just listen to it over and over again. You can go 15, 20 minutes, half hour. I'm just, you know, and just bask in the presence of the Lord. So I hope that you take advantage of our worship time. And since you can go back on Facebook or uh, later on on my YouTube channel and you can listen to this over and over again, you can just sit there and play that and listen to it and, and repeat, 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 you know. And uh, it'll bless you. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to have you with us this morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start our Instagram feed so that uh, we can have our Instagram family join us. So we welcome all of you watching live on Facebook and eventually on YouTube and Gab and Gab Plus and BitChute and Twitter and uh, what am I missing? <laughs> There's nine. We're now on nine social media platforms. Are we on now on Instagram? Mm -hmm. Welcome Instagram family. Good to have you with us as well. Um, I wanted to share, uh, particularly at this point in time, because with Instagram, we have to, you know, kind of cut it off at, at one hour. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't uh, record. And uh, I, I don't know why that happens, but I guess they give us an hour limit. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to just share things that Instagram uh, people have not heard. Uh, we have been involved in a number of ministries through your giving we're able to support a number of ministries. When I say support, I, obviously we're not fully, you know, the only uh, um, uh, source of their, of their provision for their ministry, but we participate in other ministries through your giving and our part, you know, of giving into that. And because of that, we're able to reach literally around the world, many different countries, things that are happening right now, people, Jews that are leaving um, the Ukraine and, and being rescued and, and taken uh, to Israel uh, because they want to finally get to their home country. Uh, people are leaving and uh, going across the border into Poland. There's a church there that, uh, that the ministries we support support that church and a number of uh, churches in the Ukraine. So we are heavily involved in, in the sense that we support ministries that are doing mighty works that we're not equipped to do or called to do uh, ourselves. And uh, so your giving into this ministry allows us to do that. And, and we're probably supporting some ministries that you don't listen to or that you don't participate in. Uh, so, you know, uh, again, a, a portion of uh, what you give uh, goes into these other ministries that we support. 
and I'm going to shut down my computer before it comes up with something I don't want to hear or see. <laughs> I just realized that I left it on. And so give me a moment here to shut this down. And um, I'm going to shut down. There we go. All right. So it's shutting down. Um, I also uh, want to let you know on Instagram the different ways you can support this ministry and through us a number of ministries. Um, we have a PayPal account that uh, is linked directly to our, it's transferred funds that come in are transferred directly to our ministry account. And you can go to PayPal and, and type in, um, let me, let me see if I can remember this, uh, at, um, oh, where are they? Okay. PayPal. You go to PayPal and you type in our email address, W E M M O N S zero one at gmail.com. And of course that's lowercase. Zero one are the numerals, zero one. Karina, good to have you with us. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're just talking to our Instagram family real quick here. Uh, if you have a Venmo account, uh, you want to support this ministry, or you want to bless us and maybe become a partner, a monthly partner, uh, you can also use Venmo. We have a Venmo account. The money gets transferred directly into our ministry account. And you go to Venmo and type in the at symbol. And it's at William dash Emmons dash 10 capitalize the first letter of my first name, the first letter of my last name at William dash Emmons dash 10. If you want to give by mail, check our money order and mail it to our ministry. Uh, you can do that. And all you got to do is make the checks out and the money orders out to CFC. Um, you, most of you know what that stands for. Uh, send it to post office box 14, 10, 74. And that's Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74014. And uh, those that want to give by debit or credit card, you can do that by sending us the information on your card to our email address, which I already gave you, talking about PayPal. Or you can, um, uh, you can text it to us at 818-679-7067. Or like one gentleman used to do, he would send us half the card information to our email and the other half to our text. That way nobody could, you know, get their hands on both of them. Anyway, so you can support this ministry. And I'll tell you what we do. Our partners, those of you that are supporting on a monthly basis, uh, we pray for you every single day. And I usually pray for you twice a day or other times more than that if the Holy Spirit impresses me to or if there's something you've asked us to pray for. Our partners have access to us uh, through email and text and phone. And, uh, you know, if you need prayer and if you, or if you got a testimony, by all means, we want to hear from you. Um, but our partners, you know, hold a special place because you guys are, you know, the support that helps us to do the things we're doing. So thank you so much for that. Um, and we believe that our partners receive a hundredfold return on your giving into this ministry. So that's the giving uh, advertisement or commercial, <laughs> however you want to say it. But um, I want to continue on with a series that I began. Oh, by the way, I want to show you something. Um, a lot of you don't know what goes on out of camera view. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch cameras here and I'm going to adjust my main camera so you can see what uh, actually takes place here or what is taking place. And uh, I'm going to switch to this view here. Now, you can see the whole camera view right now. And uh, what you see on my desk is uh, this here is my pad, my iPad that I do all the uh, on the fly uh, editing, directing and so forth of the program. Uh, you can't see off to my left here, but uh, I've got a keyboard right here for the computer, which is right out of sight here. And I got a big computer screen there so I can see what's going on when we're doing worship and so forth. And then over here, I've got my keyboard for my pad so that when I'm typing my notes and sending out uh, emails or whatever it may be, I can type like a typewriter. So that's over here. Right here, I've got my small monitor that uh, I'm monitoring our feed from Facebook right now. 
And let's see, my Bible, whoops, <laughs> and my glass of, in this case, juice and iced tea. And I've got books here that I may want to make reference to. And uh, I'm gonna shut off that speaker. That's my control for the speaker. Got my, my, my uh, watch here so I can keep track of the time. Over here, I've got my battery banks to be able to handle like uh, the uh, phone here. And then I've got the pad plugged in to power down there. And this uh, is control for the monitor uh, that we put our camera on so you can see the worship. Um, I don't know what else I'm missing. <laughs> I just wanted you to kind of see over here, we got our copier printer. And of course, one of our bookcases back there and one of them over here on this other side. And my big eagle right back here. And uh, that's, that reminds me that we were called to rise up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. All right, so that kind of lets you see what is happening around here. And until my assistant uh, arrives, uh, I'm handling all this. And uh, Pastor Mary's been, been helping me, but I wanted to kind of eliminate some of that pressure from her and uh, put it in a way that I could deal with it. I think we did pretty good today. So uh, anyway, I'm going to switch back to this other view and I'm going to adjust my uh, main view again back to where it was. And uh, we will get into the word. Hallelujah. I guess that'll be good right there. All right. So we come back to this view. All right. Hallelujah. We're on. Now, um, the subject this today is, I think, I never know for sure. I think this is the last in this four-part series titled Love, Light, and Darkness. And uh, it's part of a larger series that um, I'm going for the whole year. And uh, it's called the Deeper Walk series. So from the time we began this series, we now are on uh, part 48 so you can tell that's almost a year in itself. I think we started uh, in the spring last year. Uh, and I don't think one year is gonna handle everything we're teaching up. So we're taking basic subjects and bringing forth revelation to give you deeper insight and understanding. As I said earlier, a lot of people been in the word a long time, been in the faith church a long time, been hearing the word of faith and, and healing and whatever else, the gifts of the spirit and so forth. But sometimes they forget they need to hear it over and over and over and over and over again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. So yes, we preach the same subject and then a lot of the same scriptures many times over the 50 years um, that I've been, well, let's see. Yeah, uh, we will uh, complete 50 years of ministry uh, on July 3rd. And I, I think we will complete, uh, have to get, well, we started July 3rd, 1973, when God called me into the ministry. And then our church started in 1977. Uh, so we're, uh, you know, 44 years, going 45 years, I guess it is, uh, pastoring. <clears throat> A lot of the same messages numerous times and I'm getting slow Wi-Fi detected and then it tells me a message and it shuts it down before I can get to it. Um, I believe we're Wi-Fi is going to hold out until we're done in the name of Jesus. We've got everything else shut off. I've shut off all the other Wi-Fi units. I've got um, um, about the only thing that's on Wi-Fi right now is this iPad. So I don't know why it's saying that. God's going to take care of that in the name of Jesus. All right, so part four, love, light, and darkness. Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, which was the law of Moses. So we need to, and we've, I've been confessing this for uh, quite some time, probably well over a year on a daily basis. Uh, and I, and I, conf I take the word and make it personal. For the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me, just like it says, free from the law of sin and death. Sin and death have no power over me. Just like um, 
The Bible says Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. So I declare that the curse has no power over me and nothing under the curse has any power over me. Um, and, and you need to begin to apply your faith to those things and hearing it once, hearing it twice, hearing it half a dozen times, every time you hear it. Uh, I know I do. I listen to Brother Copeland, Brother Hagen, and uh, Jerry Savelle and others. And uh, I listen to messages I've heard dozens of times maybe. But every time I hear it, I hear something fresh and new. So don't get tired of hearing the same subject and even the same scripture sometimes. It always comes out different. John chapter 13, verse 34 from the Passion Translation. So I give you a new commandment. Love each other just as much as I have loved you. And uh, then Matthew 22, verse 36 through 40 from the Amplified Translation. So I give you, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, they asked Jesus, teacher, which commandment is great and important, the principle kind in the law. And he replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and most important principle and first commandment. And the second is just like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments, love God, love your neighbor. These two commandments sum up and upon them depend all the law and all the prophets. In other words, as, as we operate in love of God and love our neighbors, and I don't mean ooey-gooey, you know, you smile and talk softly and give them a handshake Sunday morning at church. Love goes far beyond that. Uh, uh, faith without actions is dead. And I could say the same thing. Love without works, corresponding works, is dead. Uh, when we say we love our neighbor, what do you do? What, what are you doing? I know Mary, Pastor Mary will go out and she'll bake some goods and take it over to our neighbors next door on both sides. And now I think she's even expanded one or two more neighbors. Uh, of course, part of what we do is we talk to our neighbors. We, we don't fellowship necessarily, but we talk to them. Um, there's opportunities for ministry there, but that carries over into other aspects, not just your neighbors, uh, loving your enemy. That's, that's a hard one to do. Some people that just don't like you and want to hurt you in some way, uh, love your enemy. Uh, that's a hard one, but, uh, you know, you go into the store, you go into the market, um, and, and you express love to people. And again, it doesn't mean you go, go around hugging everybody and say, oh, I love you, brother, you know, and uh, that's all good and fine. But it's, it's the way we treat people. If you love somebody, you treat them different than somebody you don't love. And I think as a Christian, and Jesus said, if, if you love them like I love you, then people see the love of God and it, it's, it's manifested, it's revealed. To them that love of God if we love them like Jesus loves us and by the way Jesus loves the the sinner God loves the sinner the Bible said God so loved the world he sent his only begotten son amen so let's let's go on uh first Corinthians well, I'm doing a little bit of a recap right now first Corinthians 13 8 we found out in the amplified translation love never fails so you want to do something that doesn't fail walk in love Walk in love. Uh, I, I've, <laughs> I think people in a, in a church need to get a hold of this. Walk in love towards your pastor. Uh, those of you that are in churches where there's, you know, murmuring and gossip and, and uh, a little bit of backbiting, a little bit of talking behind the pastor's back, uh, being critical of the pastor. You know, there is such a thing as a critical spirit. It's also a spirit of division, die vision. And you come to a church to um, receive from the Lord, to be in a house of fellowship and fellowship with believers and sit under a pastor that's supposed to feed you the word of God. And there are some that instead of coming and being excited about, you know, hearing what God has to say today, they come and sit there and criticize and nitpick and, and judge and, 
they get nothing out of it. And, you know, they'll be, they'll be going around saying, I didn't get nothing out of that service. Well, the question that I would ask then is, well, what did you put into it? <laughs> did you put in some love? Did you put in some faith? Did you worship during this time to worship or judge the songs or the band or the, the song leader or whoever it was? Or, you know, uh, are you sitting there criticizing the way the pastor's wife is dressed or the way the pastor's dressed? Uh, you understand love carries over into every aspect of our being. And so we've got to uh, understand that if we want to not fail, that one of the things we have to do is begin to walk in love. Amen. All right. Uh, of course, Romans 13, 10, Amplified, says, Love does, not, uh, does no wrong to one's neighbor. It never hurts anybody. Therefore, love meets all the requirements and is the fulfilling of the law. Hallelujah. We don't live by the Ten Commandments anymore. Jesus said, I give you uh, on one commandment. It's new, but it's, he says it's new, but it's not new. All right. And by that, it's based upon the two we've already talked about. And it's just love your neighbor as yourself. And in one place, he says, love God and, and love your neighbor. In another place, he says, love is the fulfillment of the law. So we need to understand that if, if uh, we don't live by the Ten Commandments, we live by the law of love. Hallelujah. All right. Um, we talked last week about how light drives out darkness. First John chapter 2, verses 9, 10, and 11 from the Amplified Translation. For whoever says he is in the light and yet hates his brother, a Christian, a born-again child of God, um, is in darkness, even until now. Whoever loves his brother, believer, abides or lives in the light, and in it, or in him, because Jesus is the light, there is no occasion for stumbling or cause for error or sin. But he who hates, detests, or despises his brother, is uh, his brother in Christ, is in darkness, and walking, living in the dark. He is straying and does not perceive or know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Wow. We don't want to walk in blindness. Colossians 1, verses 12 through 14 from the King James translation. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath, remember, hath is past tense made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You're not going to partake of the inheritance of the saints if you're not walking in the light, if you're not walking in love, if you're walking in darkness because you've got anger against somebody, you've got resentment, you've got unforgiveness, you're walking in darkness and that darkness blinds you. You begin to reason and rationalize and think it's okay to get even with somebody. It's okay to get back. But God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So we've got to trust God to deal with people that, for whatever reason, have done something that have hurt us in some way or offended us in some way. The Bible says not to take offense. That, that's, an act, that's an act of faith on your part. You've got to resist the temptation to be offended. My wife can tell you, I don't get offended. You know, I may not like what somebody does or says toward me, but I'm not going to take offense and I'll forgive them. And the next time I see them in the mall, walking down the street, I'm going to greet them. I'm going to hug them. I'm going to say, I love you. You know, I'm going to bless them. Why? Because I am not going to take offense. I've done that my, my whole uh, 44 years of pastoring. And, uh, you know, there's people that have done and said some terrible things about me over the years and I forgive them. I love them. I treat them as if that, you know, that had never happened. That's not easy to do sometimes depending on what the person has done, but that takes an act of faith to walk in that kind of love. And then we walk in the light, the revelation of God, instead of in the darkness, the ignorance of the things of God. All right. Uh, verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of, of dark, we are delivered from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. 
and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom, in Jesus, the light of the world, remember, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Now, let me go back to the phrase, uh, in whom, in Jesus, I mentioned the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12, Amplified Translation, says, One, uh, once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light. And this translation, the Amplified Translation says, the light which is life. I want to make a comment here because as I was studying this, the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance something I heard way back in the early 70s uh, over at UCLA, I believe it was. They were doing some experimentation with what was called, and I may, I may mispronounce it, but you can find it. Uh, Curlian starts with a K. It's something like K-U-R-E-L-I-A and something like that. Curlian Photography. And what they were doing was they were uh, putting, uh, you know, uh, basically doing experimentation with people putting their hands on a glass that was uh, being uh, photographed through this type of photography. And what it photographed was the amount of energy flowing through your body. Through, you, you know, your, nerve in, your nerves are like straws. They're hollow in the middle. And they discovered that light flows through your nerves. And one of the things they discovered was that sick people had very little light flowing through them. And healthy people had a lot of light flowing through them. I always wanted to go there and say, I want you to test my light. <laughs> See how much light I've got. Born again, spirit-filled believer must have more light flowing through us than those that aren't. But ne never got a chance to do that. But the light represents life. If your nerves are shut down, your body's not functioning. If there's no light flowing through those nerves, your body's in trouble. Well, the light, where does that light come from? Oh, one of the scriptures we've read before says God is light. And Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. So uh, apparently we have to, you know, kind of think this thing through, but when we're born again, the light of life dwells in us. And that life will flow through us. But let me, let me share this with you. If you are in strife, if you're in sin, if you're in offense, which is sin, uh, that, that's going to shut down that flow of light through your body. A lot of people wonder why they're sick or why they're having problems, mental, physical, emotional, uh, because the light that may be in them because of Jesus is not allowed to flow through them because they don't walk in love. They don't walk in forgiveness. Hallelujah. Think on these things. <laughs> Amen. All right. So let me, let me kind of turn to the other side now. What is darkness? Well, darkness is the absence of the presence of God. Darkness is ignorance of the things of God, uh, the things of the Spirit. Uh, it's out, uh, when you're out of contact with the light, you're in darkness, all right? So if we're not in the Word, if we're not in prayer, if we're not in fellowship, if we're not talking to God, if we're not renewing our faith through meditating the Word of God and feeding on the Word of God, we give room for light to be reduced and darkness to come in. But we talked last week about how light drives out darkness. Get more light in you, <laughs> you know, drive out those little pockets of darkness that are trying to hold on. Amen? Hallelujah. The Greek word there for darkness that's in that scripture that we talked about is skotia. Skotia, uh, it means dimness, obscurity, literally or figuratively, darkness and blindness. Uh, in other words, you can't see truth. You can't receive revelation. You can't fully know and understand God. You can't understand his love. You can't understand redemption and forgiveness. You can't understand things like 
uh, healing and uh, financial provision. And the Bible even talks about that the world can't understand it because they walk in darkness and they can't understand the things of God. It doesn't make any sense to them because they're living in darkness. But when they finally recognize their need of something and they finally turn to God and they make Jesus Lord, boy, I'll tell you what, that life comes into them. That light comes in. It fills them with the light of God. And I'll tell you what, a brand new baby Christian most of the time it is full of zeal and excitement about what God has done for them and how he delivered them from sin and all this, the lifestyle that was out there destroying them. But, you know, sometimes as a Christian, uh, we, we don't stay with the things that we were excited about when we got born again. We don't spend the time in the word like we did then. We don't spend time in prayer like we did then. We don't go to church as often as we did then. We don't fellowship with Christians like we did then. I remember when we were, uh, now I've been born again since I was a kid, but I know when Pastor Mary got born again uh, early on in our relationship, uh, she couldn't get enough of fellowship and church and, and and listen to Pastor preach. You know, we had a pastor named uh, Pastor Bibler, Brother Bibler. And what a great name, Bibler, Bibler. <laughs> he was a Bibler man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, anyway, she wanted to go hear him preach. And then the Holy Spirit would move in the services and, and I remember services where, uh, I, I remember one particular instance, uh, we had a missionary that was uh, going to speak this night and the youth had, or this day, and the youth had come out and done some praise and worship. And there was a, they'd go out the side doors off the platform into a back room, which they called the choir room. Um, and they would go back there and then from there, come back into the service on the outside. Um, but they got, they had been praising God. There was such an anointing on the praise. They got back in that, um, that choir room and they were still back there praising God and the Holy Spirit just broke out and they were back there shot and you could hear it back there. And it sounded like a revival meeting. And this poor missionary was trying to preach his message and, and you could tell he was being distracted by all the noise and He'd look over the pastor, kind of like, aren't you going to do something about all that noise back there, you know? And all of a sudden, the side doors on the platform opened up, and the young people came dancing in the spirit across the platform and literally just took over the service. And, and uh, you know, that, that was a move of God because their hearts were open to the things of God. Well, I was part of that group at one point before we got married and started raising a family. And I know those experiences. I grew up with things like that. And uh, that poor missionary, he, he turned around and said, all right, now, uh, young people, it's time to calm down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach here a little bit. So you all take a seat. And they, they were just lost in the spirit. And I thought, oh, that poor guy, he doesn't even understand. He doesn't recognize what's going on. He should have just joined in with them. <laughs> Amen. The congregation did. And we had a great time of praise and worship and ministry. Now, I said all that because as you, as you grow from your new birth time to years down the road, sometimes we get away from those things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we don't worship like that anymore. And, and I, I remember we wanted to be in fellowship. We, we actually started a Bible study in our home, and we were teaching once a week. We actually, the, uh, the pastor assigned a family to come and and check in on us to make sure we weren't doing anything against the church or trying to start a new church from the church or we weren't preaching false doctrine. Um, and, and we were doing the right things. Uh, eventually I was asked to teach a Bible study on Sunday evenings and uh, minister, I became the youth minister. And this all before I was in the ministry. <laughs> but um, we were excited about fellowshipping with Christians. And we'd get together and, and uh, as groups and, and we would go places and do things and activities and uh, fellowship during the week. See, that's as a new Christian, we do those things instinctively. We want that. But what happens when you get older? What happens to your Bible reading? When you're first born again, you probably read the Bible a lot. You probably prayed a lot. What are you doing now? Uh, we need to hold on to that youthful mentality 
and continue to be excited about the things of God, the word of God, reading it, meditating it, praise and worship and, and fellowshipping with Christians. Amen? Amen. All right. So <clears throat> it says here, verse 13, uh, it, well, let me go back to verse 12 again. I'm sorry. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, are able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Our inheritance, the Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. We are heirs of God. What does it mean to be an heir of God? That means all that he has, he's made available to us. We're his heirs. Our children, our grandchildren, everything we have is, if I can say it this way, is available to them. All our resources, abilities, knowledge, wisdom, uh, you know, they're welcome to come to our home anytime and have a meal with us. And we've told our son that lives here, uh, you know, when you come on over, if there's anything in the refrigerator you want, if you're hungry or thirsty, we always keep stuff on hand, food and, and soda. Or, you know, we have the stuff. What's what's the name of that water that uh, comes in the can, Mary? Um, no, it's, it's just bubbly white water. Yeah, but there's a, a name for it. It's from Wisconsin. It's mm -hmm. the name. Anyway, um, so we keep that because we know our son and his wife like that kind of water. We keep a supply of that. But they're welcome to come. I've given him a key to our house. Now, he doesn't just come over unannounced, but he can come in and enjoy our house and enjoy what's here. Uh, our grandkids are welcome anytime because we love them and we want to do whatever we can to be a blessing to them. Well, if we as, as parents and grandparents have that attitude, how much greater is God's attitude of, of generosity and blessing and wanting us to be able to partake yes. of what is his? And so we have an inheritance and we're not going to wait to heaven to get it. It's something we can tap into right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when you're walking in darkness, you don't get that. Amen. All right. Um, so let's, let's jump down here now back to this darkness thing. Um, we, when we're walking in darkness, we can't see the truth. First John chapter one, verses five, six, and seven from the King James translation says, this then is the message which we have heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, which is, by the way, the light is also revelation. When you walk in the light, you see things that you couldn't see in the darkness. And one of the words, biblical words for that is revelation. As he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. We have fellowship with Jesus. His blood cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. If you're not born again and you never made Jesus Lord of your life and you're walking around with the weight of sin, you're carrying that around, the guilt, the condemnation, the, the uh, um, unrest, the unhappiness, you need to understand that the moment you make Jesus Lord of your life, that all goes away. He cleanses us from sin and unrighteousness. Now, that means we have righteousness. In fact, the Bible says we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We walk in, the word righteous simply means right standing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain help and mercy in time of need. We can go before God. We don't have to go through a priest. We don't have to go confessing a bunch of stuff to get to God. We can go right to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. See, that name gives us access. In the name of Jesus, I come before you, Father. And I know you hear my voice. The Bible says he hears us. He hears our prayers. And he answers our prayers. In Psalm 91, we've read many times, he will be with us in trouble and will deliver us. But we've got to call upon him. The Bible says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be 
saved or delivered. Hallelujah. God, the Bible says God will honor us there in Psalm 91 and, and satisfy us with long life. I'll tell you what, if, if you're dying, well, if you're dying, you're not hearing me right now. <laughs> or, if, you know, maybe you are if you're in a hospital or something. But if it <laughs> kind of got off track there a little bit, um, <laughs> we can call upon him. He will satisfy. If you're sick, if you're, if you're up in your, well, you know, my dad died at age 48. So, and his problem was his words. He always said, I'm going to, I'm not going to live to be an old man. I'm going to die young. Mm -hmm. and, and he certainly did at 48. That's not old. Uh, I don't think our age, we're, we're in our seventies right now. I'm 72. And, uh, I don't think that's old. Uh, I've got a lot of vitality and, and, uh, I shared with you a few weeks ago, I wanted I've, for years, I've watched the Olympics, and one of the things I, I thought, you know, I've watched them do is called curling. It's an old Scottish game, but it's in the Olympics, and curling is where they have a big rock that's been ground, and the ones they use now are ground down and smooth, and they're kind of, uh, you know, oval-shaped this way, but round this way, and they got a handle on them, and they slide them down the ice, and it's kind of like shuffleboard on ice. And I've always thought, I'd like to do that. I could, I could do that. I'd probably be really good at it. And um, so for the first time in my life now, I found a um, curling team and uh, a, a place you can actually play that sport and compete right here in Tulsa, just, just three or four miles from us. And uh, I have plans to go in and learn the sport mm -hmm. and begin to compete. It's just something I've always wanted to do. And, uh, you know, when, when you think about things like that, uh, and I'll probably be the oldest person there, and that's okay with me. A lot of times I'm the oldest person in, in things like that, that we've been involved with over the years. Uh, when I studied martial arts, I started at a, at a later age, and uh, I, I'm the oldest black belt uh, in the studio where I studied in Chatsworth. Um, and I, and I, was, I was always the oldest one there. <laughs> and if I was there right now, I'd still be the oldest one. But, uh, you know, people ask, ask me questions like, well, aren't you too old to do stuff like that? As somebody asked me, I came home from surfing one day, uh, aren't, you, aren't you a bit old to do that? And my response is, where's that written? <laughs> it is written, my youth is renewed daily. Amen. All right. And I said all that because we, we read here these verses uh, where God is light. Jesus is the light of the world. The light is life to us. Mm -hmm. and, and if, according to the word of God, my youth is renewed daily, then the aging process has no power over me. See, the aging process uh, in the world's way of thinking, it's a dying process. That you're just kind of, you get up in your 70s, you just kind of wait until, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm old, I'm going to die, you know, I don't have that many years left. I've had actually preachers tell me the same thing. Well, we don't know how much longer we're going to live. I'm going to live as long as I want to live. And my, my goal is to live till Jesus comes. And if it's more than 70 more years, then I may just decide it's time for me to go home, <laughs> be with the Lord. But I've got things to do. I'm... I've got ministry to do. I've got people to reach. And, and uh, you know, I'm going to keep on doing what God's called me to do. Uh, and I'm going to keep on believing God for my youth to be renewed daily. See, but that's walking in the light incorporates these kind of things. But it, it, these kind of things, you may think this is a supernatural miracle. Well, yeah, it is. But it comes down to some basic things. Walk in the light, not darkness. How? Forgive love. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that's that one love. It fulfills all the commandments. All right. Now the Greek word that we're, we've used here for light uh, means to shine or reveal or make manifest. And that's revelation knowledge. That's revelation of the things of God. When, when uh, Jesus asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And he responded, well, some think you may be Elijah or one of the prophets. And he said, but Peter, who do you say that I am? 
He says, thou art the Christ. No hesitation. Peter was a bold man. The problem was, before he got saved, uh, he'd stick his foot in his mouth. It seemed like every time he opened his mouth to say something. Well, now he says, thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the son of the living God. He said, Peter, you're blessed. Because man, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But my father in heaven has revealed it to you. He received a revelation in his spirit and it produced life. Amen. And, and that's what it's talking about here. When we walk in the light, we're going to have revelation. We're going to receive insight and understanding, see deeper into the things of the spirit. There's so much more to understand about the things of the spirit. And when, and when I hear people talk about, well, I'm really spiritual and, and they're involved with fortune telling and, and numerology and, uh, you know, all this other stuff that's, that's a lie of the devil. It's an imitation. They're, they think they're spiritual and they're involved with spiritual activity, but it's not godly activity. They need to be born again, spirit filled and, and learn to directly receive from God by the Holy Spirit, not by a demonic spirit, and get insight and revelation. And the Bible says God will even reveal things to come. God will show us things to come. He's given us the gifts of spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, to show us things, to reveal things, to, to open up and, and give revelation. Oh, man, God has given us so much. Hallelujah. So, to shine, to reveal, to make manifest, or to bring revelation. So that's what the light does for us. If we are filled with light and, and allow that light to drive out all darkness from our lives, we're going to be able to receive insight and revelation. I, I, I got to tell you, there's not a time that I read the Bible that I don't get some revelation I didn't have before. And, and like I said, I've read the Bible through a number of times. But every time I read it, I find something I didn't see before. I get revelation. And it doesn't come hard. It's, it's a, I mean, I study, I prepare for these messages, and it's not a hard thing. It, it's not a thing where I'm struggling to try and find something to teach or preach. Because the Holy Spirit rises up and brings forth the revelation. Because I'm filled with light. And I don't hold unforgiveness. I don't, I'm not in strife with anybody. I'm not uh, offended by anybody because I don't take offense. I'm not bragging on me. I'm just telling you the decisions I've made. And the decisions I've made in that regard has allowed the light to flow in me and through me. Hallelujah. All right. Um, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. Now we're going to read a few verses here, so bear with me. If you got your Bibles, you can read along. I'm reading from the King James. Most of you have that, so you should be able to read pretty easy. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we... Now listen to these words. We have, not we're going to have, if we're born again, we have an advocate with the Father. Now another translation says an intercessor. Jesus intercedes on our behalf, ever ready to make intercession for the saints at the right hand of the Father. But the word advocate is actually a legal term. An advocate is an attorney, a lawyer, a representative. Jesus is our attorney, our, our advocate, our lawyer. He, he works on our behalf. He talks to God, on our, the Father, on our behalf as our representative. Hallelujah. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation. Now, that's a word that we don't use. Really, we don't use that word in modern English. But propitiation simply means sacrifice. He is the sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, stop and think about that. Jesus paid the price for all men everywhere to be forgiven. He paid the price for their sins. And yet men out there and women out there, young men, young women, teenagers, many have not received what Jesus did for them. Wow, that's, that's a shame. 
He came to save the lost. And yet many of the lost rebel against that and want to invent their own religions, want to go with some cultic religion, want to, want to be their own religion, be their own God. Well, that's not going to work. All right. So he became our sacrifice for the whole world. The Bible says righteousness has come upon all men, but it can't, it, it doesn't do them any good if it's just on them. It's got to come in them. Okay. You got to make Jesus Lord of your life for righteousness to come inside of you. Hallelujah. All right. Hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments, which are his word, not, not the Ten Commandments, but his word. Okay. And, the, and remember, there's love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. Now, the other scriptures, the, the, particularly the teachings of Paul the Apostle, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. The, the word that, that the apostles wrote are just as much the word of God as the words Jesus spoke. And, and, and Paul even talks about uh, that. We need to understand that they wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And the things that they wrote, we need to hear and we need to feed on them because they reveal the Father. They reveal the Jesus. They reveal the wisdom of God. They reveal the Holy Spirit. So they're important to us. All right. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments, which is his word, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. When people say, I know God, and they're not born again, they're, they're religious. They don't know God. They're just being religious. They think they know God. They think they're spiritual. We pass by a church I mentioned to before here in town, big, big edifice. I mean, it's one of the biggest edifices I've ever seen. It's not a Catholic church. It's a Pente uh, not a Pentecostal, but a, um, a denominational church. I don't need to say what, what kind it is. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's huge, big, big buildings, big to uh, towering steeple, with a cross way up, must be 60 feet in the air. I don't know, it's really up there. And I thought, I'd like to just walk through this, see what's, it's such, I've never seen a church this big. I'd like to just see what's in there. Why is it so big, you know? But um, there's a lot of people in churches like that. They're very religious. They go to church faithfully. They may even give, may even tithe, because it's kind of a legalistic thing. It's something we do to, to make God happy with us, you know? We don't do it because we want God to be happy with us. We do it because the Bible says it's for our benefit. It's for our good. We tithe because that tithe opens up the door to God's blessings, to the treasury of heaven, that God can bless us. God said, I, when you bring in your tithe into my storehouse, God's storehouse is wherever the word is actually being preached, where you're getting spiritual food, not just religion. And when you bring that tithe into the storehouse, and you, you begin to give into a ministry that is teaching you the word of God, bring you into revelation knowledge of the things of God, and it's feeding you that that tithe, then he says, you bring in the tithe that it may be spiritual food in my house. And prove me now by this, he said, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you up blessings to the point you won't have enough room to receive it all. We understand what that's like. God wants to bless his people to overflowing. But sometimes we don't even do the basic things except out of religious responsibility. And then it doesn't work because there's no faith involved. We do it because we feel we have to. <clears throat> Some churches actually bill their members every month for their giving. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, that's, that's not giving out of your heart. That's giving out of responsibility. And there is a certain amount of responsibility, but not not a religious legalistic thing. Amen. All right. So he saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments. He's a liar and the truth's not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily, the love of God uh, is the love of God perfected. All right. Now let me turn the page here. I'm going to come back to this here in a minute. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as Jesus walked. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Brethren, I write you no new commandment, but an old commandment, which ye have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write you. Now, now he's not contradicting himself. The first thing he said was, I don't write a new commandment. It's the same thing you've heard from the beginning. He said, but I write a new commandment. <laughs> and he says, which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. All right. So what's the new commandment? What Jesus said. All right. He said, love, love your neighbor as I have loved you. That's the new commandment. But it's not a new commandment. It's an old commandment. Love God first and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. That's why he says is new, but it's really not new. But it's new because you think the old had passed away, then you don't have to do that. You still need to love your neighbor as yourself. So he goes on. He saith he um, he is in the light and hateth his brother. He, I'm sorry. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even till now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is not none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness or blindness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Now, I want to go back to verse 5. Verse 5, he says, Whoso keepeth his word in him is the love of God perfected. And, and I was got this, I was studying, and that popped up, you know, kind of went off like a light bulb in my thinking. And so I, I went to the Greek on that, uh, that word perfected, uh, telos, T-E-L-O-S, telos, uh, means to uh, a levy or debt paid. A levy or a debt paid. You know, if you owe the IRS money, sometimes they'll, uh, they'll put a levy against you. It means that they're going to use your property or whatever you've got to pay the debt you owe the IRS. So this perfected means the levy or debt has been paid, ending finally and to the uttermost, that debt. Wow. That's, 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 that's so packed full of revelation there. The debt of sin has been paid. But then you can bring that into the physical realm. Jesus paid the price for your sickness and disease uh, to be overcome, to be defeated. So you don't have to be sick. You don't have to be carrying disease. You don't have to be lying in the hospital and having doctors working over you all the time. I'm not saying you might not, you know, end up in a situation where you need their help, but that ought not, not to be the lifestyle with them. That debt, because of sin, sickness and disease came in. That's part of the curse. That debt's been paid. Well, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, what I read right off the bat, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So sin and death, sickness and disease, poverty and lack, oppression, depression, fear, anxiety, all that's under the debt. And you can read it in Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through 68. Verse 61 says, including every sickness and every disease not even written in the book. That includes COVID. Anything they can invent, it's covered. That's the debt that we have to pay because of sin. But Jesus paid the price. So we don't have to pay the debt. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Let's go on. I know I'm running out of time here. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 3, King James translation. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image or manifestation of God, should shine unto them. The devil... The God of this world, when you're not walking in the things of God, the word of God, the devil blinds you. He's the God of this world. If you don't walk in the things of God, you operate under the curse. The, the word of God provides a, an umbrella in this earthly life so that we can be protected from everything that's part of the curse. Amen. But we don't take advantage of that because we don't walk in the light. Are we letting our, 
Okay, Instagram family, we love you guys. We'll see you Tuesday night. Now, we're not done, folks. I want to want to get to a stopping point here. Um, I think I can finish this if you'll bear with me. Hallelujah. You're going to bear with me, right? All right, let me see who's on with us. It's Karina, Steve, Portia, praise God, and some more. I don't know who they are, but there's a lot of people watching, so welcome. All right, so we were in, um, where were we? Uh, we read, okay, 2 Corinthians, if our gospel be hid, this is chapter 4, verse 3, we read verse 4, verse 5 says, for we preach, not ourselves, the, the apostle says, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake, for God, who commanded the light or revelation of him to shine out of darkness, hath shined or been revealed in our hearts to give the light or revelation of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, the word glory there is a Greek word, doxa, D-O-X-A. You've heard that before. Um, when I was in school, we sang the doxology. The first um, song that we learned to play when I joined the school band and orchestra was the doxology. It's a short one. All right. Uh, but the word dox is a Greek word. It means the life and nature of God, the life and nature of God in self manifestation. Every time we use the word glory, we're talking about the life of God, the nature of God manifesting itself in our situation. Oh, the glory showed up. The, the times we've been here, and, and I think three times in the past six months, we've had the glory of the Lord show up in, in, here in my studio. And uh, it, it's showed up as a cloud filling the room. Now, I saw it with my eyes. Mary didn't, Pastor Mary didn't see it, uh, but I could see it. And, uh, but she, uh, she said, you know, when that time you had that vision and, and the light showed on you, she said, I didn't see that either. And, and, you know, sometimes people see things that are happening. Sometimes people don't. And that's not to say bad things of, you know, there's something wrong with them. God manifests himself to each of us in ways that, that we can receive. And I know Pastor Mary said, you know, I don't need to see anything. I don't need to get a word from anybody. I've got the word of God and that's all I need. And I used to be sitting next to her. We'd sit on the front row at Fred Price's church when Kenneth Copeland would be there. And, uh, I'd be looking for Brother Copeland to give me a word, you know, give me some great word about our ministry or something. And um, and he'd come, he'd stand right in front of us and he'd look at me right in the eye and I'm thinking, here it comes, here it comes. He'd look at Mary and he'd give her a word. She's the one saying, I don't need a word from the Lord. I've got his word. I've got the Holy Ghost. I'm not looking for anything like that. And I'm sitting there, give me a word, give me a word. <laughs> and she would get it. Well, I've got the word. And I got a hold of the word, and I ain't letting go of it. Amen. All right, let's go on um, in verse, um, uh, I, okay. So we've got light, the revelation of God, the revelation of salvation, the revelation of our redemption. There's a lot of Christians don't even have a revelation of their redemption yet. Mm -hmm. I've been saying it for years. We are redeemed. We say, I'm the redeemed of the Lord. What does that mean? Re means you're going to be restored to something like restore, replace, rebuild, repaint, refinish. Word, the, the re on the beginning of something means to, uh, if I can just simplify it, restore something. All right. So we are redeemed. So what's being restored? What God deemed for us in the beginning. The word deemed means decided. God made a decision about how he was going to uh, bless mankind when he created us and Adam and Eve in the garden. And the garden pattern uh, is the example of what God deemed for man. Abundant, not just barely enough, abundant provision, more than they would ever need, divine protection, uh, comfort in every capacity, every way that you can think of. I mean, here they were naked. They could lay down at night and sleep on the grass. 
not worried about bugs, <laughs> insects, snakes, uh, animals. I mean, you remember they had all the lions and tigers and, and apes and, uh, you know, all kinds of animals uh, that were there in the garden because they all came out of that place. And yet they were not afraid and nothing hurt them. And yet, and then when they, of course, they sinned, they lost all that. But God deemed the plan of God was the garden. That was the plan God told Adam and Eve to spread throughout the world. Go out in all the world, have dominion and subdue the earth and all of its vast resources. And another place it talks about not just the earth, but all of God's handiworks, all of God's creation. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface on God's creation beyond the earth. We're barely out there exploring the space around the earth. We've sent, um, you know, satellites out and, and vehicles out into space and gone to Mars. Um, nobody's gone to Mars, but we've sent vehicles there with cameras and stuff. We see pictures there. Now we've got a telescope that reaches further out there than we've ever seen before. But we have hardly gotten off the planet. And yet God says, subdue all of this that I've created for you. <laughs> all right. So, oh, man, I get excited about these things. Redeemed. We are the redeemed and we say so. So I'm saying, for me personally, for us, that we walk in the pattern God originally planned with abundant provision, abundant blessing, no sickness, no disease, no lack, no want, in, in a place of comfort, um, <laughs> To subdue and have dominion and authority is an amazing thing. And I think a lot of Christians have a hard time even believing it's possible. But see, as you begin to get insight and understanding, you begin to see these things as yours. Hallelujah. All right. Um, I don't think we started Matthew 13, verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony place, uh, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, yet hath not root in himself, but dureth or endureth for a little while, and when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by is offended. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns. He is that one that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke and suffocate the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good soil, the good ground, is he that heareth the word, understands it, which also here beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. <laughs> we need to make sure that we are good soil. We become the good soil by digging out the rocks of unbelief and doubt fear, anxiety, anger, animosity, unforgiveness. you got to dig that stuff out. We do that by spending time in the Word and in prayer, praying in the Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. got to take me a little sip of my apple. My apple iced tea. Mm. That is so good. That's my own concoction. <laughs> One day I'll share it with you. But we dig out the thorns, we put, we, we, you know, thorns and thistles, the curse. That's what they put on Jesus' head when he's on the cross. That's what the curse produced, thorns and thistles. Well, there's people that their, their spiritual life is full of thorns and thistles or it's hard soil. They don't receive what they hear. They're religious, but they don't have any revelation. Uh, sown by the wayside, sown in the rocky soil. Then he talks about those people that have good soil. Your hearts, your minds, your spirit man has been renewed to the things of God. 
you have a heart to serve God, you're seeking God. That song that we sang at the beginning, uh, you know, he is our first love and we seek him. We, we desire to seek. That's why that song is so good to play over and over again. I want to keep that fire burning in my heart that I had when I first got born again. Hallelujah. All right, now listen to this in Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 15. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. You are a whosoever. Hallelujah. How then shall they call upon him? How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's where I come in. <laughs> you're going to hear. When you listen to me, you're going to hear the word. And I'm going to reveal Jesus. I'm going to reveal the Father. I'm going to reveal the Holy Spirit. I'm going to reveal the things of God. He's saying, how can somebody receive if nobody is there to, to deliver the message to them? All right. And how shall they preach except they be sent or called? That's why I'm here. I'm sent by God to do what I'm doing right now. And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. That's what I'm doing right now. And you're hearing, and I believe you're receiving. Amen. Now, you go back to the sower sowing the word. We've got to be able to hear the word for it to get sown into our life. But in the meantime, we've got to dig out all the garbage that's in there. We've got to turn our back on sin. We've got to turn our back on the flesh. And when you turn your back on something, you're walking a different direction. I'm walking toward God instead of walking toward the mess I was in. I'm not continuing going that direction anymore. Amen? But it takes somebody to come along and teach the word. Somebody to preach the message, to bring you good news that Jesus paid the price, so you don't have to live in that mess anymore. Hallelujah. First John chapter four, verses seven through eleven. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is or springs from God. And he that loves his fellow men is begotten or born of God, and is coming progressively to know and understand God, to perceive and recognize and get better acquainted. Uh, and clear a knowledge of him. He who does not love is, uh, I'm sorry, he who does not love has not become acquainted with God, does not and never did know him, for God is love. In this, the love of God is made manifest or displayed where we are concerned, in that God sent his son, the only begotten son or unique son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation or the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God loved us so very much, we also ought to love one another. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I've brought you a series, Love, Light, and Darkness, and we've talked about all three, and I, I think by now you've got the picture. You want to walk in the light. You want to walk in love. Amen? And we've talked about what Jesus did for us. So I want to uh, pray a prayer with you. Uh, if you're not born again, or you don't know whether or not you're born again, here's the easy question. If you died today, would you go to heaven? If you can't say an absolute, you know, yes, I know I'm going to heaven when I die. If you can't say that, then you're probably not born again. You may be religious, you may be doing religious things. That does not mean you're born again. All right. So how do we get born again? I want to lead you in a simple prayer and we're going to do it. The Bible says, if you will believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that's a decision you have to make. I choose to believe. There's not one prophecy in the Bible that hasn't been proven true. There's not any scripture that has been proven false. We've not been lied to, all right? So don't, don't let anybody lie to you like that. Everything God said, he does. So we have to make a decision that we believe what God said. We believe 
what the Bible says. We believe what we've been told by, uh, of the word of God by preachers if it matches the word. We make a decision. I'm going to believe this. Why? Well, first of all, it's good news. And not only is it good news, but it's the only thing that promises total forgiveness of our sins, a total cleansing from unrighteousness, and a total restoration to fellowship with God, which is what Adam lost. And man's been trying to invent that for 6,000 years. And they give us all kinds of false religions out there. And God even promised to Adam and Eve a redeemer one day. And he came to Abraham, made a covenant, and promised through him would come a redeemer. And the redeemer would do what? Redeem us, bring us back to that condition in the garden before the fall, where man was in connection, vital connection with God. He walked in the life of God, the nature of God, the spirit of God, all that was in him. And God could come down and talk to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day and, and minister to them and teach them. That was God's plan. It's still God's plan. We can have that again. That's what happens when you get born again. Now that's available. Amen. So make a decision. You're going to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. He didn't just die like, like every other false prophet and false teacher out there. He just died. They haven't been raised up. Buddha didn't get raised up. Confucius didn't get raised up. Joseph Smith didn't get raised up. Muhammad didn't get raised up. Only Jesus was raised from the dead and has, was witnessed to by a multitude of people. In other words, they saw him. All right? So we have testimony of that. We have proof of that. Make a decision now to accept that, that truth that God raised Jesus from the dead. The second part of that says, if, if you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, confess it. If you confess him as your Lord with your mouth, you will be saved. There it is. I make a decision to believe what God says in the word, that God, Jesus died for my sins, God raised him from the dead. That if I confess him as my Lord, I'll be saved. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, I come before you today. I make a decision this day to believe that Jesus died for my sins and you raised him from the dead. I receive the testimony of every writer in the Bible that prophesied concerning Jesus. And I make a decision today to receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. Renew me now and become my Lord and my Savior. And God is my Father. Amen. Now, now you can go to God and say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is your Lord and your advocate with the Father. You have a right to come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain help and mercy in time of need. That's something you didn't have before you prayed that prayer. Now we can know God, not just know about him. We can know Jesus, not just know about him. We can know the Holy Spirit, which would be your next step being baptized in the Spirit. And we'll talk about that another time. But you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk to you about that sometime soon. All right. If you prayed that prayer with us this morning, or you pray later on as you hear this message down the road, whenever you hear it, it doesn't matter. If you prayed that prayer, it's still right now. All right. Uh, we want to give you a book. It's called Welcome to the Family. And uh, we'll send you this book free of charge. We're not asking anything for it. We'll even pay the postage to get it to you. But we want to give you this book. And what it does, it gives you the basic steps. As a baby, there's things you need to learn. You're a baby Christian right now. And there's things you need to learn about living this life. This book will give you the basics and get you started on the right path. And serving the Lord and being a, a turned on, power filled Christian. Amen. Amen. So I, write, uh, send me an email. My email is wemmons01 at gmail.com. And uh, if you'll send me an email and say, Pastor Bill, uh, I'd like that book. I prayed that prayer. I got born again today. I'd like to have a, that copy of that book, Welcome to the Family. And give me an address to send it to, and I'll send it right out. And uh, with that, uh, if any of you need prayer, I want you to reach out toward me right now. If you're watching, uh, you know, from where you can't reach out and touch your device you're watching on, uh, just reach out toward it. 
if you have that device, a phone or a pad or a tablet or whatever in your hand, just put your hand on it somewhere in the name of Jesus. We're going to use that as a point of contact. Father, I pray for that back right now. Back problems, I command healing. Be healed. Pain, leave. Uh, uh, spine, come into alignment. Every vertebrae back in place in the name of Jesus. Stomach problems, I command healing right now. Whatever it is, I command it to go from your body right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank your problems. I command the ears to open, hearing to come clear again, the buzzing to stop, the, the hissing to stop, the, the, the noises, the high frequency to stop in the name of Jesus. I command those ears to be open and hear clearly in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray in agreement with every person that's reaching out right now as an act of faith. Father, I pray for their healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I command the anointing, the healing to flow into their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll say it again. I've, I've been saying this the last few weeks since the Holy Spirit ministered to me on this, that he said that uh, when I minister, when I, when I open up and say good morning or whatever, the anointing is already flowing. The pastoral anointing is flowing. The, the teaching anointing is flowing. And the healing anointing is flowing because that's what God's anointed me to walk in, those three things. If you need healing, the moment our program starts, you can receive your healing. uh, Any time during, you don't have to wait for me to pray. You don't have to wait for me to call it out. All you got to do is say, Father, I know that healing anointing is flowing right now. I receive it into my body in Jesus' name. Command that sickness, that disease, those symptoms, command them to leave your body in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you have a financial need, I want you to get your wallet out. Ladies, get your purse or your wallet, wherever you wherever you keep your money. Uh, maybe it's your debit cards, your your bank cards, whatever it is. I want you to grab that really quick. I'll give you a minute if you need to run over in the other room and get it, bring it in. I'm going to pray over your finances. I shared with you, uh, if you're a tither particularly, God said he'd open up the windows of heaven for you and pour you out blessings <clears throat> to the point you would not have enough room to receive it all. And he said he rebuked the devourer, and it said he, he, he would not be able to devour your seed or the fruit of that seed. So the devil can't steal from you. You give, and it comes back to you. Hallelujah. Um, One sec. What is going on? All of a sudden, my phone came alive. I must have said something that Siri heard. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what's happening with that. Praise God. Um, All right, you got your wallet, you got your checkbook, you got your bank cards, whatever you got. Father, I pray right now for their finances. I command that the... I command those barriers that have held back your finances to be broken, where they've been held back from me, I command it to be loosed and released in Jesus' name. Father, particularly to those that are tithers and givers, Father, open up the windows of heaven as you promised and pour the blessings out. Abundance, Father, more than enough, for you take pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. You said you'd supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, Father, I pray I pray for new jobs, better jobs, raises and bonuses, found money, money in the mail, checks coming in, uh, inherited money, won money, whatever it may be, investments paying off. I pray, Father, that money comes to them from the north, south, east, and west, from multiple sources, multiple directions. As if they're givers, Father, let it come a hundredfold return in Jesus' name. I command supernatural debt cancellation on you right now that the debts you owe are going to be somehow taken care of in jesus name amen amen now you've got to be a person who receives that 
you've got to say, I believe God's going to help. I believe God's going to help me get that debt. It may be paid off. It may be forgiven. It may be just wiped out. You don't know how it's going to happen. You may find a bag full of money. I'm not telling you that God said that, I, you know, but it can happen. It has happened. You may be walking along and, and see something by a tree and, and you go over there and look at it in a little hole or something, you dig at it. And, and like the guy up in Northern California, him and his wife were walking down the path and they saw after a big rainstorm, it had washed away some of the dirt at the foot of the tree. And they found what looked like a tin can in there. And they found a number of them. They pulled them out. Inside were gold coins. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, in fact, there was a big hoard uh, of gold. Uh, God has multiple ways to get it to you. All you got to do is put your faith out there and thank him for it. And be sensitive. Be open. If you feel pressed to start digging somewhere, just go dig away, man. I'm not saying that that's the way it's going to happen. I'm just saying that can happen. God has so many ways to get finances to you. You'd be surprised. And God's going to surprise you. So I look for it. Begin to expect God to do special things for you. Amen. If any of you out there are not partners with us, pray about it. Pray about becoming a partner. The more partners we have, the more we can accomplish, uh, the more we can do. We're on nine social media platforms right now. And we're trying to develop those. Uh, some things uh, cost, as you know. Uh, it costs us to get the programs we need. Some of them have a monthly fee to use to be able to broadcast out to multiple platforms at the same time. We still are not able to do that. That's why we have one camera set up for, um, for Instagram and then the rest of you watching us on Facebook. All the other of you that are watching on other uh, social media platforms just because we've had to take it from Facebook and paste it over onto that social media platform. But there's programs that we could purchase and, and get for a monthly fee that would uh, allow us to do it all at one shot. So there's things that God's spoken to us that we're supposed to do as time goes on. I've got a book that I'm, I'm uh, getting ready for reprint. What did I do with it? I thought, oh, here it is, my book on Job, and I'm adding a whole nother segment to it. Um, we're going to redo the book. It's going to cost about $4,500 to do that, and then we're going to make them available. But it first, this first explains what happened to Job and how Job finally got out of the mess he got himself into and why it happened. You'll finally understand the book of Job for the first time, and then... Uh, what was the one force that helped him to recover and end up with twice what he had, what he lost? And that's a good uh, study. But we want to get that printed. So there's things like that. And I've got a number of books in, uh, in process that I've been working on them for years. Some of them, some of them I've just uh, started working on. But uh, as God provides the finances, we'll get them out and it'll help a lot of people. And then there's other things God's spoken to us to do. So like any ministry, you know, it takes finances to do uh, what we're doing. And uh, our partners are the ones that fund that uh, through their giving. Some of them are uh, members since we're an online church. Some of them have become members of this church and uh, they tithe to this ministry. Others uh, give occasionally because they tune in, they, they get blessed. We become a supplement to what they get from their home church. And then there's partners, and partners are the ones that give faithfully every month. They pray for us. They join us in faith for, for projects like, like the book project and other things that I've mentioned, and uh, they join their faith with ours, and then they support us financially. And, uh, you know, obviously that helps us to get things done consistently because as the giving consistently comes in, we can consistently not only pay the bills, but begin to reach out and expand our uh, impact in this world. So pray about becoming a partner with us. And, you know, whatever God impresses upon your heart, be obedient to do that. Amen. And uh, we'll believe with you. We'll pray for you every day and uh, believe for a hundredfold return for you. Again, if you don't know how to do that, we have a PayPal account. And uh, my email, wmms, E-M-M-O-N-S, 01, at gmail.com. Go to PayPal, type that in. On the second page, 
Uh, after you've entered the amount, it'll ask you if you uh, want to choose friends and family. Choose that. That way you, they won't take off almost 4% fees. Uh, we've got a Venmo account, and you can go to Venmo and type in the at symbol and then uh, William Emmons 10. So the first name is capitalized, the first letter of the first name is capitalized. And the first letter of my last name is capitalized, William Emmons 10. Uh, and you can give that way. Those go are linked to our ministry accounts. If you want to give by check or money order, you can send it to CFC, Post Office Box 141074, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, zip code 74014. If you want to give by debit or credit card, you can either email the information to us um, at our email address, which I've already given you, or you can text it to a one eight six seven nine seven zero six seven, and then. Uh, but we need the full information for the card, including the zip code uh, where your statement goes. They they need that to set up for us to make that um, withdrawal from your account. But it only happens one time. It doesn't happen every time. So let the Lord direct you. And we appreciate our partners. We appreciate everybody that gives. And some of you uh, may only give occasionally. We, we appreciate that. It helps. It blesses. And we believe for God's blessing and for it to come back to you multiplied supernaturally. Amen. All right. We're going to let you go. Have a blessed what's left of this day. I declare a blessed week for you this week. Expect great things to happen in your life this week in the name of Jesus. And we'll be back Tuesday night. And we'll see you then.